if you ask any right-minded person, do you want to be successful? You can be pretty sure that they're going to say yes. Success is an intrinsic yearning of the human heart. We all want to be successful and we admire, generally speaking, successful people. But when we take a closer look at the concept of success, we see that success is an abstract noun. It actually doesn't have any meaning or moral purpose or content unless we actually first think about what someone is successful at. There are a lot of people that we don't admire who would be considered successful because perhaps we don't agree with what they are successful in achieving. So success is an abstraction unless we actually give it some meaning and some content. Now, when we look around the world, humankind has defined, broadly speaking, two categories through which we understand and define success. We either understand and seek success through honour, through fame, through influence, or we seek it through pleasure, through feeling good, through having our desires satisfied in a sensory context. So success through honour or success through pleasure and convenience. The problem is that a lot of the people out there who have scaled the heights of achievement in both of these categories, sometimes in one, sometimes in both, often they're not successful in the sense of the deepest existential longings of their hearts. So we see people who are very wealthy, very powerful, who have scaled the heights of business, of politics, of economics, whatever it might be. They're very beautiful, they're celebrities, they're influential sometimes, and yet they struggle for the existential success that their hearts are longing for. We see broken hearts, broken minds, broken spirits, sometimes even broken bodies, often broken relationships, broken marriages, dysfunctionality, mental ill health. We see all of these things. And so what we can deduce from this data set is that it's time for a countercultural look at success. It's time for a countercultural conception of success. Mark Twain famously said, the two most important days in your life are the day that you were born and the day that you find out why. In saying that, Twain, probably accidentally, stumbles across the heart of the Christian gospel. Because success can't be defined in the abstract. Success needs to be accompanied by purpose. Success and purpose go hand in hand, and there's no way of knowing whether anything is successful until we first know what its primary purpose is. What's the reason for which it was created? Then we can understand success. In the same way that we don't really know whether a spoon is successful or a chair is successful or a table is successful, we first need to know what the purpose is for which those things were made, what the purpose is for which they were designed. Then we can evaluate success. So it goes with you and I. For us to understand what a successful life looks like, for us to understand what kind of success we should be striving for, we first need to understand why we were made. Now it's interesting, Jesus has asked this question point blank by a lawyer. He's asked it just before he tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. He's asked, how can I achieve or how can I get eternal life? And Jesus responds by declaring very simply the purpose for which every person was created. He says, love God and love your neighbour as yourself. He effectively says that the primary purpose for which we were made is twofold, to be in loving relationship with God and to be in loving relationship with one another. That's the purpose for which we were made. That's the reason for which we were made. That's what ultimate success looks like. It looks like being in right relationship with God and being in right relationship with the people around us. Now today, we often build up our own conceptions of success and then we keep God out, we block him out because we think that he's not going to help us fulfill our definitions of success, fulfill our notions of success. But he's going to do far more than that. He's not just going to come and try and stop us being successful. He's going to completely redefine what success means. And he's going to do so by showing us that we have a much higher purpose than simply finding honour and fame in this world or building up accumulation, material wealth and pleasure in this world. He's saying, I have a transcendent purpose for you to be in loving relationship with me and then to pour out this transcendent supernatural love on the people around you and on the problems of the world around you. That's countercultural success. It's not just quantitatively different to what humankind conceives in our own strength. It's qualitatively different. And we see that it brings to culmination this countercultural gospel of Jesus Christ. This countercultural message that through its transformative power doesn't just redefine the ideals on our hearts, but it makes a way for us to live out these transcendent ideals, whether it's authenticity, independence, freedom, success, or peace. The life lived with Jesus Christ is a countercultural life. It's increasingly countercultural when we look at the world around us, but it's no less transformative than it was for all those thousands of years. A life lived walking with Jesus Christ is a transformed life, is a countercultural life, is a successful life, ultimately is a fulfilled life because we go to the one who knows us best, who wants our flourishing more than we could possibly know and who has the capacity and the supernatural, transformative, grave opening power and love to make it a reality in my heart and in your heart. Thanks again for joining me. 
God bless you and take care of yourselves.